Hi, everybody, and welcome to Metaphysical Insights. I'm William Becker, your host, and Josh Miata is my fantastic guest today. Now, I want to warn you all, um, Josh has been having severe thunderstorms all day. I've got them overhead and have for the last three hours. Um, so we'll see how well this goes, um, how long the power stays on and how much interference we get from thunder and lightning. And so my apologies in advance for any technical problems the storms cause. And like that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so Josh, welcome. You're a magician. You can vanish and come back. <laughs> I'm impressed. Right? Right? Yeah. I'm a techno Welcome wizard. To the show. It's me, and I'm nervous, so I just shut the screen off. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I need your powers. <laughs> I want to try them. Uh, how are you doing? How are you holding up with all the storms? I know it's been kind of a crazy day for you guys. Uh, so I'm more doing good. Uh, we originally had a big family beach day that turned into school shopping, but it worked out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm glad your school part's done. So, cool. Now, I met Josh just a week ago when we were on a show together, and I thought, oh, I like this guy, and I want him on my show. And so <laughs> um, we're going to do a little bit of exploring and with tech difficulties and such, we didn't get a chance to talk. Oh, a whole I got to show up. I did that in the last show too. I have another t-shirt for your show. This one's for your show. See, it's Bigfoot meditating. All right. I love it. <laughs> Excellent. My kind of guy. Well, Josh, um, let's just kind of ju jump into it. How did you get involved? Um, what are your, in your main interests in the, in the the larger paranormal field if you've heard anything okay one of this is, is happening too because it both screens go down <laughs> yeah I, I know you keep freezing did you hear what my question i did not hear your question okay i said um how did you get involved in the paranormal what are your main areas of interest that oh, kind of um, that's um, this is a that's tough, one. tough one um i guess um, i guess i've been a very young age if i didn't go away, didn't go away. You, you hear me still uh you went away but you came back all right i've been involved in the paranormal for a very young age um i guess i found some of my mom's like wish Wiccan books. So, and then I was, was reading them. And then I had a, some books about like, uh, sea serpents that was like really old from the seventies. And that like really interested me in like cryptozoology. And like, uh, my grandfather was an avid, um, hunter. I'm from Northeast, Northeastern Wisconsin. So it's all wood, wooded area and farms here. And cheese and alcohol. <laughs> yeah. I'll but anyways, well, my well, grandfather, I spent a lot of time with growing up, and he was like an avid outdoorsman, and he always was told, talked about cryptozoology. Sometimes we'd listen to Coast to Coast, if you're familiar. Um, grew up in the era of uh, X-Files as well. Okay. Josh is by me. Yes, I am. I uh, actually... Eric, we went uh, shopping, school shopping today in Oshkosh, and I went right through Kakana, but I had to show, so I didn't have time to stop by or hit say hi. I got to do that one of these days. <clears throat> but anyways, yeah, I, I kind of been born into the paranormal, I guess. <laughs> Oh, that's uh, I've been into ghost hunting. I've had some extraterrestrial experiences, we'll say. Um, I've been on cryptozoology hunts. So, yeah, I mean, I'm in all forms of the paranormal. And I'm very into the esoteric side, too. So, <laughs> Well, that's, that's the metaphysics, the esoteric and 
that connection with that deeper universe within that's without is my main focus anymore, okay. especially. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Now, ghost the the ghost hunts. Do you have any in particular that really stand out or? Yeah. Uh... I'm one of them weird ghost hunters. I was actually employed to be a ghost hunter, and I got into it. Some some richer guy came up to me because I was really heavily involved in the punk rock scene in my 20s. Well, I shouldn't say heavily involved, but I was, like, really into punk rock. I had the hair. I lived with a bunch of other guys. We were anti-establishment. We pretty much were groupies to bands. Well, we weren't groupies, but, you know, we were going to bands to bands to bands. That's what we lived for. You know, we are traveling to Milwaukee, to Madison, to Green Bay, back and forth. And, you know, it was really fun. But anyways, I was at a bar, and I was doing this myself. I was going ghost hunting in my 20s. I'd meet people at the bar that were uh, atheists, and they're like, there's nothing. And I was like, hey, you're wrong. I'll go show you you're wrong. You want to put some money on it? <laughs> and then we'd go to these haunted places and I would convince these people and then they'd become friends and then they'd start becoming ghost hunters with me. And it's just kind of spiraled. I'm going to say, do not do how I did it in your 20s because I was kind of a crazy punk rocker. I just went wherever the places were haunted. We didn't get permission. So just, uh, don't do it like me. Go and get permission because you will deal with the police. I did many, many occasions and I got away because I would say, can you see that episode of uh, on the History Channel? Like, this, this is the most haunted place. We had to go here. And then, then they would buy it and they'd be like, never come back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, and I could see where that would work. Um I learn a lot from about the history places I want to go from some of the shows. Yeah. 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 That's just, a, just part a part of it. But, uh, but uh, eventually I was at a bar and this rich guy came up to me and I had, I had, uh, what was it? It was Cheetah Prince hair at the time. And I was, I had like all the crazy punk stuff. And he was like, Oh, I heard you're a ghost hunter in town. And he's like, do you make any money doing it? And I was like, no, I just do it kind of for fun and to show people that there's something else. And he's like, hey, do you want a job? And I was like, sure. And I was like, what What, what do you want me to do? And he's like, hey, just, just come to Illinois, check out some of these spots, and uh, we're, we're going to train you. And anyways, like, I went, and uh, I brought some of my friends with you, one of my best friends. His name is Kevin. He passed away. Um, but anyways... We've st we got to go do a lot of investigations in Colina, Illinois, which is a magical town. If you don't know about it, there's a lot of history from the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln is from Illinois. He loved Galena, and he would have meetings at the library for battle plans. And that's where he would go and meet with the generals. And I got to investigate some of these spots, and there's so much history. And... We got to work with the historical society in that town, and it's just so many crazy things just lined up. Um, very sad, very, very sad. Some of the war sites, you can just feel it in the air. Right. They, they, they are tainted. It's not a good word for it, but they're, they're marked forever, it seems like. Yeah, and the hauntings there are not the same as hauntings otherwhere. They're like flashes. Like uh, you'll sometimes we'd hear reports of guys seeing soldiers, but they would just just they just be glances of them, and it's almost like part of their energy is stuck there. That's the way to put it. Yeah, and I think that's what it is—just a piece of the energy. I don't. I, I haven't run across anything that's trapped and I'm a medium so I can talk to him and um, yeah, that makes sense. Now, did you have the way to put it um, though? Like the way we experienced it too, was like, they didn't even seem like they were, it was even like a conscious being that was stuck. It was like just a little bit of energy, like a little bit of energy because it would just be like a, a guy in his uniform, you know, at his, 
ready to do what he's got to do in his squad. Right. Yeah. Those are fascinating. And I think I, I see a lot of that kind of thing um, where I live. I live in the oldest incorporated town west of the Mississippi. And mm. it was the capital of the Oregon Territory. Um, so we have a a lot of history here and yeah, lots yeah. of just just flashes, bits and pieces, um, a little bit of color that flashes by. Sometimes part of you'll see part of somebody, sometimes all of it, all of them, but just real quickly. And um, it's interesting. It, it just makes life more rich and fulfilling. But um, now what kind of um, when you're doing this, it sounds like your motivation is to prove that there is something else. And yes, this was uh, the early 2000s. It was after 2007, you know, like 2010. Uh, the Internet and YouTube were kind of fresh. We were really, really big on YouTube. Um, I wasn't part of it, but like my group that I was part of actually was at a conference with the, with the, the Ghost Adventures. It did not go over well. They actually had a big argument. I wish I was there for it. Apparently, somebody struck Zach. Um, Zach called them hacks, and one of the investigators slugged him in the mouth. So he called. One of your group, or just one of the other audience members there? Oh, uh, one of our group. Our group. Wow. It was like a big, big, big conference big with like with all these all different ghost hunters. hunters. Uh, I think it was in Georgia, if I remember correctly. But I was like, I'm not going that far. <laughs> yeah. I was also 20, so I was like, uh, you know, I have rents and beer money. And like, I, I live in Wisconsin, so like the whole bar scene was kind of, you know, it's like it's like part of our legacy. You know? <laughs> I'm not part of that scene anymore because I have a bunch, I have kids and wife and wife. Yeah, yeah, it's called reality and responsibility. Kind yeah, of to a person. but it's totally different when you're 21. Right, I I know. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, have you had anything in particular that really strikes you or stands yes, out? Yes, yes. When I was in Galena, we had this case at a chocolate factory. It used to be apartment complex in the 30s, and we had a little girl that we investigated. We had all sorts of evidence. We even had a penny test where she moved stuff around. For some reason, she got attracted to me, and I had a really profound experience in a... Uh, it felt like a child was crawling on me when I was sitting down like this, and but it was cold, and it was like the most like like intense paranormal ghost experience that I ever had. It literally like I felt in my soul that I knew this who this little girl was. Wow, that's fascinating. I love it. Um. Do you, do you get a chance to actually communicate or get more of a a conversation with her? Because with that kind of feeling, I mean, I would, I'm, I'm thinking you may have actually felt her. We did and, have uh, psychics, psychics with us, with us. Okay. and they did they speak did to her. her. Um, um, and a little a racier little note, racier somebody, somebody brought, brought a Barbie, Barbie and who was an owner when we were talking to her. But, the Barbie was of a different race, and she died in 1933, and she flipped out, and, like, stuff got spilled out, and, like, stuff got mixed up, and, like, they had, like, a really bad day at the chocolate shop when they did that. Really? And then we explained to her, to her that I'm like, yeah, she passed away in the 30s, so she, she kind of took that as an insult. Okay. Yeah. That was uh, you know, uh, you know. That was like one of the wild of things the wild too things that happened when we were there. We were there. Um the other thing too is we did this penny test where we put pennies, like tons and tons of pennies everywhere, and then we put cameras up and we saw them actually move. That was pretty wild. 
Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. Well, you know, and it might, reminds me, though, too, one of the things we have to consider when we're out working with the, the entities is they come from different set of rules and values. And for the most part, if they haven't kind of kept up with changes of the time, we're pretty barbaric and rude. Um, just the way we dress is... That was the um, thing, too, I remember with the median. The crazy thing, too, was the owner at the time's mother passed, and she ended up there, and she was taking care of that little girl. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And she got really, really weird with me because she's like, he's a punk. Because <laughs> I had the crazy hair and like, and I could feel it that there was like bad energy. That's what I said too. I was like, there's something evil in here. And they're like, the medium's like, no, nah, no, nah, you're good. You're good. You're good. And then she explained it to me when I got out. Um, that was the other wild thing that happened with all that. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. And that makes sense. You would have been from something of a different planet for, for them. At that point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm and um, for some reason i don't know maybe she thought i looked funny like cartoon character because of my hair i i don't know because it was the 30s i don't i don't know why but she really really liked me as they said and that was that was really profound and like i said i had that moment where it literally felt like how my, my toddler crawls on me except i felt the cold spots wow and that that was like that was it i knew like ghosts were real i was <laughs> Hundred percent, like the click unlocked. <laughs> oh, I, that's fantastic! Now, do, do children, as a rule, like you? Children, I mean, as a whole, yeah, it's just I, kind of as a rule, do they gravitate towards you and that kind of thing? I ah uh, yeah, I accept my children when I punish them, and then you know he's like he's Doctor Doom, he's the worst person on the planet. How could you take that controller away? You cut me off from society, Dad. <laughs> You'll understand when, when you're old yeah, he's... for your own good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that because that could be part of why she was so attracted to you, and that's why I asked the question. Is because this was way before I had kids, though, so it was weird. Yeah, I kind of feel like yeah, she, I probably felt like some strange to her, some funny. I probably looked like probably looked like a big chicken, my mohawk. <laughs> yeah. Well, did did um, kids like hanging out with you in general though when you were that age? I think so, but I totally was like. Go away. Go away. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm just curious because sometimes that you know the just because they no longer breathe doesn't mean they don't pick up on a kindred or a kind caring person. I mean, yeah, I, I mean I was a big kid myself at that age, I feel like. Oh, okay. Well then sure that makes a lot of sense. Um, what kind of a word of advice do you have? Uh um to people going out in the field now uh going out ghost hunting uh don't be insultful be polite you'll get more answers mm -hmm. yeah remember they they're just they're like us just like they're us. just going yeah. to a different place mm -hmm. um the other thing too is there's a science behind all of this you know, we're all made up of energy and just like a battery, you know, it never, there's, you never can really truly get rid of energy. You can just break it down into a different form. Yeah. And just to switch, I'm trying to keep the ADHD brain somewhat focused and in check here. The longer the day. Yeah, right. You get two guys with ADHD, and then you're like, "Oh, what are we? What are we doing? We're doing that. We're doing that. We're doing that." We're doing that, we're doing that. <laughs> I take meds, and I'm still all over the place. I lose my. I forget what I'm talking about mid sentence. Um, Me too. But, oh, good. I'm. I'm glad. I'm. You're not the only one. There's a. Whole, there's a whole bunch of us out there. <laughs> I know. The and for me, it was adult diagnosis. You know and. So it's uh, it's crazy. It's great. 
but I want to. Like the storms have stopped for both of us too, which is awesome. Well, I'm still getting um, thunder and lightning, but it's not quite as overhead as it was. Right. Yeah. I think it's completely stopped here. Okay. Thunder storms are my favorite weather. As long as you don't get a tornado, and as long as I don't do any damage, uh, they're my favorite weather. Um, yeah. yeah, we we get them too here, but we haven't had one in my area in a long time, so we're lucky. But up north, yeah, gets pounded with tornadoes. <laughs> yeah, we haven't had a thunderstorm here for quite a while, of this magnitude for quite a while. And we didn't used to get tornadoes at all when I was a kid, but starting in the 70s, we started getting them. We had a couple pretty good sized ones, and then, um, and um, we get them every periodically, usually smaller. But we've we've had a couple that have done some real damage, um, which is just weird. You know, we always it's wild. Out- um, um, sadly. There's a campground my family's been going to for generations. It's called Boot Lake. And uh, they got hit really hard a couple of years ago. And they're still there. But it, it's like everything is completely different and way more open. And it's just kind of, it's just heartbreaking. And that's totally like, I've never said this before, but like when I go Zen, and just kind of relax is where I always imagine. And it was like so weird going and visiting there and it's being like completely open and almost barren. Uh, It's wild what a tornado will do to a forest. And then if you think of it like in a public area, like, you know, with the suburbs, it's just terrifying to think about that. Yeah, exactly. Um, And it doesn't take them long. No. We used to figure scary how, here how that crazy nature can actually be. Yeah. And, you know, we, we thought, okay, well, we don't have tornadoes because we've got the, we're on the ring of fire. So we've got the earthquakes. I'm 50 miles from a semi sleeping volcano. I could see St. Helens that blew up. We had all the ash and all that stuff. Um, and um, so now when we get the tornadoes, we figure, figure it's just not fair you know we get it all now that's not it's not supposed to be that way but um i digress i wanted to go into you said you've had some interesting ufo experiences uh yeah actually i'm a family generational experiencer i i for a long time i didn't i was on my first show i just didn't tell anybody about anything they're like, why are you, why are you, why are you hosting the show about UFOs? Why are you hosting? I was just like, oh, I'm, I was interested in them. Interested, but I, I recently started coming out. Uh, my grandfather, his entire life, saw the cigar-shaped UFOs. And uh, one time, when we, when I was really young, my mom and my grandma, my grandfather, my entire family, I just mentioned bootleg. We were up there, and. Uh, we were somewhere further up north. Like I said, my grandfather grew up in the Vietnam area, and uh, his buddies, you know, were all veterans. He's part Native American, and big, big outdoorsman. When I mean big outdoorsman, I mean he'd go to work, put his boots on, hunting into the woods, or if it wasn't hunting time, it was to the lake. Um, anyways, anyways. He, he took me deep in the woods and we were talking and I was real, real little and we saw something and he freaked out and picked me up and ran and I kind of was like a memory that I suppressed. So there's that. Uh, I had another median tell me that I had that was a Wendigo experience and I keep trying to unwrap that. A Wendigo experience. Um... But the real crazy thing about that, I don't know if you're familiar with this guy. It's kind of like around that area. He's He's got a book about these people that experienced that. So I've been trying to unwrap that. That's a recent thing that happened to me. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, my grandfather, would see these and he talked about them. My mom and grandmother and her brother saw them all together with him. And he's like, I, I'm done with this. I'm going to shoot these sons of bitches. And like when he got his gun and my grandmother's like, get back in the house. You don't know what you're doing. Get back. In. <laughs> and this was like early eighties has happened. Um, flash forward. I, he's passed away. I'm married with kids. I'm going to my parents' house. Um, and let's pick up my kids. We go back and we're like, it took us two hours to get home. And it's like 45 minutes away. And we took the same route. Uh, my wife has had experiences. I'm not going to dive into it because she doesn't want to talk about it too much. But her family has to they're from up north she grew up in a logger family so it's kind of like weird that we married you know <laughs> they're like in that weird coincidence um flash forward to this year i was having these like night i wouldn't say they're nightmare they're really really combative dreams about these like vampiric beings i see them in my dreams like watching me and they're like, it was really weird. The first it started with one. And I was playing in my front yard with my kids. And I just, I saw him. And then I walked up to him and he just like froze. Like, like he, he acted like, you know, like I couldn't see him. And then I shoved him and we got like in a wrestling match and I hit him. And he like, he like started bleeding really bad and he's like you're the one that shouldn't exist and he's like how did you do that and left and then it like it bugged me so much that i i used to be in the mma and like kickboxing when i was younger before i got married i re-enrolled and started actually doing this and then these dreams started getting more intense and there was more and more and more of them and uh and uh fast forward a while i'm actually in it i'm going to a gym with my son called title town shout out to them um and i'm doing kickboxing i'm still having these dreams and then i have a really really bad one where i'm like i get jumped at the mall by like an army of them and i uh in my dream these gray beings show up and like slaughter them and like take me away and i'm all injured and put me in this tank and they're nothing like anybody describes. They're like your average 19-year-old Marine. They're chain-smoking. They're laughing about killing them things. And I just have these very vivid dreams with them. And then I start having more and more and more of them. Wow. And, you know, I don't know if they're just wild dreams, something in a different universe. That's interesting. Um. I don't know. And I'm I've got another crazy, crazy thing. Okay, I'm hoping um, those were just wild dreams. Because if that Right, was, but I got another crazy, crazy thing. thing. Uh, it's uh, about three, three years, years ago, ago. I'm at my wife's house, my wife's parents' house. Everybody's camping, so it's just me and my wife. And they have our children. And we're outside having a fire. And we see something. A, a weird looking star that's blinking and then we see another thing shoot like like a blue beam out and it and it this blinking light just disappear and then this light just like other lights just kind of kind of take off and go up interesting and you said a blue beam. and i honestly think it was them dudes from my dream i i they kind of they remind me of like me gremlins, gremlins, if that makes sense. Makes they're, they're, you know, that scene where they're like in the bar and they're smoking, and <laughs> like I said, they remind me they're not like any of the grays anybody describes. They're not like super intelligent. They're, they're like the, the brain span of 19, 18 year eighteen-year-olds in the military. That's what they remind me of. They're chain smoking and laughing about blowing stuff up constantly in my dreams. And it's just wild. <laughs> That's I guess, you know, they need if it's a military operation, you've got to have your cannons. I've, 
you've got to have your young recruits. You know, the foot soldiers with the guns. Right. right. But later on in these in these dreams, it's like, I'm commanding them. It's, it feels like. We have a, I have another really vivid really dream with them where we're shooting these beings that look like giant black ant people. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. If nothing else, I have, it's, 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 and then I have like an embarrassing moment of it because I don't have like a mask on like they do, and one like explodes on me and gets in my eyes, and like I go back and there's a medic and she's actually like this reptilian chick and she's completely different than anybody blames them. She's like really nice and like super spiritual and she's like calm down and gets the stuff off of me, and they're all laughing around me and like smoking cigarettes. <laughs> And that's all the dreams I've had about them so far. That's very vivid, very weird. I don't, I don't know if they're just very imaginative dreams, but like I said, I do have like the missing time. I had that experience where I saw something blow something else up in the sky, and I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> and yeah, it's hard to tell. I mean, if it's just a regular dream, or if um, right, or if you're going to another world while you're in your sleep. The weird part, though, was the time I had the dream about the vampires jumping me in the mall. It was bad. It was not like... You ever see uh, the, the zombie movie with uh, Brad Pitt? I can't Brad think of it. Brad Pitt was in a zombie movie? It's, it's like called Zombie Nation, but there's it's like everybody who's ever dead like wakes up. So there's like billions of them. That's what it was like with these vampires. And it's really weird. Like I've always like when I have these dreams, I feel like I'm trying to protect everybody in the world. It's like I'm like it's like some champion. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I don't know if it's wild dreams or what. It is, but... I think that would. It, that would make a good psychological study, if nothing else. Right. I mean, but the, the, that mall dream, I actually hurt my back the next day. And, like, I was off of work. I've still been off of work since that happened. It was the day before Halloween. Right. Yeah, because I, rem I remember when we chatted a little bit before, you got... I mean, it's a pretty serious injury you've gotten. Yeah. Yeah. That's... That is interesting. I don't know if it means anything, but it's interesting. Right, right. Yeah. Wow, you've had quite a few experiences. At a yeah. Bang, bang, bang. Um, all I've done is I've seen a UFO, so I know they exist, but that's been the extent, and it was huge and round. With lots of layers of colored lights, it was real close. I was in high wow. school, and a friend of mine and I were out by um, a river. My my parents had some just recreation property. We'd go swimming and stuff, and um, it was a good place to go out and just hang out with a friend. We didn't smoke. We weren't drinking. We didn't do drugs. Pretty nerdy. Um, <laughs> I was too afraid of my folks to get into trouble in high school. Um, and we almost, we thought, oh, I bet we can find it. And by the time we got back to my car, we thought, oh, we might find it. Because it looked like it, you know, it moved around and then landed behind a hill. And we decided we wouldn't go look for it because we weren't sure what we would find. Right. And, That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I've got friends that want to try to communicate and do things, and I'm thinking, I tell them, you don't know what it is or who they are. They might be good people that were good beings. They might not be. I'm, I'm sure they're like everybody. Most I'm species. The, I've talked to a lot of contactees, and it's more like I'm and it's what? I'm leaving sorry. a message of all I can even just stop messing with me if you like. Stop shooting each other. This whole money system. No. You. Let's see. Your mic is muted and you broke up, so I didn't hear you. There. Okay, your mic's back on. But 
I, wow, I can hear you can way hear louder you than the now. Before, you know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't happened. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can now, but you were breaking wow. up. Well, my storm anyway, just anyway. died down. So what were you saying? Anyways, every contact he I've mainly talked to has said the same thing. They're like, you need to stop messing with nuclear energy. You need to stop fighting each other. You need to get stop this money system. It makes no sense. And and your time, too, is wrong. I like them. They were absolutely right. Mm-hmm. So you think they're here trying to warn us? For the most part. Yeah. I think I think they're like us. There's a duality between them. You know, there's good guys, there's bad guys, there's guys in between. There's children. There's naive ones. They're, you know, I think they're on a spiritual journey like us. They're just a little bit ahead of us. Right. Now, do you think they are extraterrestrial? Um, from a different universe, perhaps? Or do you think um, they're interdimensional and possibly even us in a in a different dimension? Or do you think both things are going on? Or uh, There's a lot going on. Um, if you believe in the Eisenhower stories, the Venetians came here in the 50s, or whenever Eisenhower was in history. I'm not a history buff. <laughs> Yeah, but anyways, apparently, come on. Yeah, I think he was president. I think he was president when I was born, and I was born in '56. Okay, so I was right. <laughs> yeah. Um, um. Anyways, he had a relationship with a supposed extraterrestrial from Venus named Thorhan, um, and he came and was. Apparently went to like the United Nations, like, hey, you need to stop this and this and this and this. And this. Do this, and we can share our technology with you, but you have to give up your war ways and all your nuclear bombs. You have to disassemble them and prove it to us that you did it. And we were like, no, we got technology from these guys, and they very much still have war, so we're not really interested. But the president had a relationship with him. Um, and his granddaughter, Laura Eisenhower, still goes around and gives speeches. I don't know if you're familiar with her. No. No, I'd heard a little bit about this, but is there any proof about this, or is this a legend? Or I, um, I'm really interested to know what backs it up? I have a degree in history. Um, my bachelor's, my master's is in public administration, science background, um, and so I need, I need hard proof. Right, right, um, right. Um, I'm one of those guys. And um, is there anything um, on this? Because honestly, I, you'd have to, have to Laura. Okay. Um, <laughs> And I, I have just other... seen documents on TV about it. <laughs> okay, yeah. And some, you know, sometimes you can see something that's pretty accurate, and a lot of times you don't. And so I was just curious. To I be truthful, I though. Heard about Pardon me? To be truthful, though, about it, I've seen some of her videos. I've talked to her briefly. But she seems to be a really spiritual lady, and... Mm -hmm. I think there's something to it myself. Okay. Well, that's that's interesting, and that's I'm glad to know that. Um, I'm interested in learning. Right, me too. And but I'm interested in truth as much as we can know it. And here's so another fact, though. I'll throw all that at you. Yeah, you Venus is the here's a here's a fact I'll throw at you though. Venus is the brightest planet in our solar system. Right. Is it bright because of their cities? It's a gas cloud. But if uh, all this is true, it's not. 
It's just there, you know, this parent, this city's on it. Because she was a Venetian. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was wondering if, and you see, when you first said Venetian, I was thinking the city Venice. And because it, oh. <laughs> it was a little choppy. I, I, I missed yeah, a couple yeah. of the pieces you said. So um, I, um, that is a key one. That's interesting. Um, I wonder if it was Venus in a different universe. That's possible too. Or There's also universe. the whole theory that that NASA's been lying to Obama so long, a lot. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Um, it's it's an interesting idea. And right. I'm sure there's a lot. Well, I'm sure there's a lot out there that we don't know about. I mean, the Pentagon has finally released yeah, yeah. documents that have shown that, yes, there have been encounters that they have not been able to explain. And I believe it's supposed to be in his diary. He talks about Thor, Thorhan a lot. And there's pictures of Thorhan, though. Really? Mm -hmm. huh. Okay. He looks like a very German gentleman. Okay. If you've got a link to any of that, send it to me. If you wouldn't. Yeah, I'll, send, I'll find a picture then I can send it to you. Yeah, or something, because I'm interested in. Like I say, I'm interested in learning, and there are all kinds mm -hmm. of things that are possible. I don't, I don't say anything's impossible. I'm not sure about probability, but possible. Um. That's fascinating. Now I'm going to. Well, first, is there another one? Is there um, any other thing with that before we switch to cryptids? Oh, uh, no. Uh, no. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to. I, I know these are all areas of yours. Um, Charles, I, I don't know what we can do about it. I'm not hearing the echo at my end. Um, I'm sorry. Sometimes with the technology, it's a real pain. Um, hello, 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 hello. Yeah, I hear yeah, you loud and clear. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but um, I feel like, I feel like uh, uh, Streamyard always does always this does because I'm a streamlab stream guy. guy. Aha. Uh -huh. It's personal. <laughs> so like, it it yeah. 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 That that's probably it, you know. The ghost <laughs> of StreamYard. Cuz you had that people were noticing that on t Tuesday as well. Yeah. 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 But I didn't hear anything. Um it was good for me. Uh yeah, there's no there's echo no canceling. Yeah. Okay. okay. I tried okay. to. I tried. I'm sorry. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um. Well, what about what's got you involved in cryptoids, and what kind of experience have you had with those? Um. Well, I live in Wisconsin, so the Beast of Bray Road. We got Bigfoot. We got some yeah, sea or lake monster. So, lake monster, I didn't know about. Then I said, I when I was younger, I had a book about like uh, sea serpents, so that like a big influence. And my grandfather and me would watch old horror films. I was a big Ray, Ray House fan. Okay. Yeah, and. Um, what kind of actual experiences have you had? You said you go on, you go exploring, looking for them, and yes, um, um, I've been on a couple of hunts. We really didn't find much, but you know, I have heard a lot of stories just hunting and hearing from other guys. Um, I had one down towards Paradise Chain, where my one of my uncle's friends was had a really crazy experience. His camper get, kept getting pelted with rocks. Okay. Until he left. Wow. 
Um, little rocks or big rocks? Big rocks. Big rocks were enough where it upset him and they left because it it, it caused a significant amount of damage to a pretty big luxurious camper that was designed for hunting. Uh oh. Yeah. Jeez. And they had like an, an instinctual terror inside of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I have de- done a lot of interviews with some Bigfoot hunters. And I honestly think it's way different than what most people think. There isn't some crazy beast out there. There's something out there that's more mentally evolved than that. And, and in tune with nature. Okay. You think me- more mentally involved than we are? Is that what yeah, you said? yeah, absolutely. How so? I honestly yeah, think there's think some, uh, uh, they're part of nature. There's some sort of forest guardian. guardian. Okay. Have you seen one? I had that experience that I said in the beginning. I could have swore it was probably a big boy. And then I had that medium tell me, so I said, no, you saw a window go. Yeah. So unfortunately, I apparently I have not. <laughs> okay. What is a Wendigo? I didn't. It's a Native American shapeshifter. Okay. And I never, this is what I was told. She was communicating with my grandfather. But she was dead on. She knew what kind of truck he drove. Um, she knew um, about hunting. He knew phrases that he said to me. Uh, she knew my grandmother. She knew my friend who was a ghost hunter with me that passed away. And this, none of this stuff was on my Facebook. My grandfather died when I was a child. So, like, and, and I know I'm like, talk about him ever, except for. I started talking about my experiences, and this was way before that happened. She's kind of the one that pressed me to do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fantastic. And 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 thank you. You see, I'm I'm beginning to learn more and more too. Um, I have seen one, and I've had telepathic communication with them. Now, can I prove that? No. Um, no. Well, I believe you. I be delusional, possibly. But um, the one I saw, it was very clear. I stood there and watched him. And I think he let me see him. But I wondered for a long time if they were interdimensional, where they would come yes. in and out. Yes, and the yes. Fae that's what well. I mean. They're more evolved. Yeah, and like the Fae, I think that's what a lot of what they do. And I, I, I want to throw something out there about me. the Fae. You what? I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot of people out there that have faith a lot in them. That's interesting. I think it's. I think it's in the soul blood, in a sense, mm-hmm. not the physical DNA. I don't think if you took a blood test, it would show up. But I no, think it no. take, shows up in other ways and uh you're right and again i can't prove that but yes um i agree with you (laughs) that's right yes 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 Yes. that's and everybody i know who it seems like they found them it's now become their mission to make sure they're not found yeah and what I've, you know, the ones, I was with a group of people led by somebody who's had quite a bit of experience, not a full on visual, but a lot of experience, including seeing to a degree. And we had a lot of activity in our camp. And I was surrounded by all these people who have lived in the woods at times or hunted rat all the time and you know, people who knew what was going on out there. I'm a city boy. I don't know what's going on out there. Um, and um, I live in the suburbs now, and I am I have to drive to get to the grocery store, and it drives me crazy. Um, 
but um <laughs> it's, it's funny because i grew up like that <laughs> yeah and um it's but anyway they were talking about no good one of the guys i was having conversations with the family and our leader was there was an adolescent female and you could almost see them along the side of the we were on a little gravel forest service road and um you could almost see them you could sense them very strongly but they weren't quite visible to us but the communication telepathically was very clear and i i'm a good medium i mean i don't want to sound boastful but i am um and talking to them the guy leading this wanted the the adolescent to hold, you know touch his hand or something like that and the adult male said no it doesn't matter what your intent is no good follows man mm -hmm. and they don't want to be proven to What's exist that? because they yeah don't they, want, want, they want they don't want to wind up in zoos that. or on the wall as a trophy they want to be left alone and so I swore I wouldn't tell anybody where the place was. And I haven't. Now the other thing we have going on in Wisconsin is the wool warts werewolf or the beast of Bay Road. Okay. If you're familiar That's with uh, Linda Godfrey. No, I'm not. Linda Godfrey. Uh, she was a news reporter who started reporting about dog man. And then she kept okay. following trails and following trails and trails. And she kept finding more places and more all over the world that had that had seen this werewolf looking thing. And she like made it her life mission and became a uh, cryptozoologist, like one of the first ones around here. Wow. Have you seen anything with that? I have not, but I have done done, done tons of investigations. Um, I did have a interview with somebody who did see one in another state. Okay. And How did they describe it? Terrifying. Terrifying. I bet. Yeah. Uh, he was on a Native American reservation, and uh, one moment, please. Sorry. Sure. My toddler got in. Got in. Ah. <laughs> uh, I got it. I got it. Huh? You um, can um, introduce us. Oh, I'm sorry. I, he's kind of wild, so I'm just like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh my mom. Um, yeah, it was terrifying for him. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, he actually spent the night in his Jeep. Outside his house, holding a knife. <laughs> Jeez. Why inside the Jeep at the house instead of inside the house? I think he was just frozen. Frozen. Okay. Yeah. I can't imagine. This Bigfoot, it was, you know, a huge thing that I saw, but it was clear that they weren't, had no in bad intent towards us they they left us alone you know that way they weren't scary but we were polite um you don't go bang on trees and play right calls and all that stuff that just makes them mad this was weird this was though weird. He, he like he controlled the weather around, around them, around them. Wow. and he made the trees made move weird. Weird. Like, that's interesting like, and he was somebody who's really into like magic and just uh, spirituality. And stuff. And it was like it was completely different for him. He actually started living areas 
whether it's Bigfoot sightings, because you heard they don't get along. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Now you've you've talked about the um, you've done interviews and such, and I wanted to get to that before we close. You've got a whole bunch of podcasts you do, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I want to hear a little bit more of those. And if you can type in on the, I think you've got the private chat you can get to. And if you can type in how people can get to you, then I'll cut and paste it into the public chat. Oh, I can, I can just say it. Uh, okay. If you want to get a hold of me, uh, uh, email me at lost through the rabbit hole at gmail.com. All one word. And where do they go to watch your um, um, your interviews YouTube. and shows? YouTube or Spotify. Okay. And what do they look up? Uh, lost through the rabbit hole. Okay. And we are also on TikTok. That's where our biggest following is. I, I don't even remember the number, but it's pretty big. <laughs> okay. Oh, fantastic. It's like in the and thousands of something. I'm impressed. Um, you're not going to get lost through the rabbit hole. Is that correct? That's okay. correct. Eric, correct. thank you for printing, for putting that out. Um, Thank, you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, because I want to make sure everybody can find and watch. Um, what was I saying? I'm sorry. I That's all right. Pretty good. That was the first time that it's happened tonight, and it's been almost an hour. Um, it right. actually happens right. within the first three minutes. Um, <laughs> Same. Same. Yeah. Um, now you cover pretty much anything on your sh your shows, don't you? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, if you have an experience, come come share it. Email me at the Gmail that we put out. Um, the experience with what? I'm sorry. Uh, just any experience, you know, paranormal, extraterrestrial. Or if you're, you know, you have an experience you don't want to talk about, or you feel like you, know, like you need to get it out there and want somebody to, you know, talk with you, I, I will do it. We don't even have to post it. Okay, that's great for people to know. Um, and a lot of those would be interesting to see. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> now, do you do any backup and research to? verify or you just let people pr present their piece and let the audience figure yeah, out? Yeah, pretty much. I just let them yeah. present. Yeah. I th that's good. I mean, you're not going to have the ability to go fact check at all. Right, right. Especially right. nowadays. <laughs> yeah. And um, um, good, morning. good morning. <laughs> It's um, it's so much of what we talk about isn't provable, especially when you start dealing with the metaphysics and the, mm -hmm. the things that just don't register necessarily clearly on a me meter that says this is what it is. Um, oh, wow. 11 a.m. in Tokyo. Um, whoa. Whoa, whoa, yeah, that's Sunday, I believe. It's yeah, 7, yeah, 7 p.m. on the Pacific Coast. Um, but oh, wait, no, they're earlier than we are. Maybe I don't remember. Anyway, Irene, what's wrong with it? <laughs> yeah, which day is it? I, Irene, uh, yeah, um. Because I know there's an international dateline in there some hey, ways. Hey. Um, but that's fine because I talked to Irene too. Okay. <laughs> <A little bit. laughs> yeah, and I appreciate the people in the UK for 
that are still up and watching it because it's late. <laughs> okay. Oh, As you so see, it's like uh, Monday for in Japan. Whoa. whoa. So yeah, it, like a day and a half later. It's like three a.m. in the UK right now. Yeah. And um, yeah, the UK is only eight hours time difference. But um, oh, this is great. And wait, you um, said eight? Because Mark eight and hours. Wayne are always six for me. For me, right? Because you're two hours. From oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Because I'm yeah. standard. Yeah. It gets mixing, or it gets convoluted sometimes. Right, and then the the, the aliens are telling us we're doing this wrong. Yeah, oh, <laughs> Irene just says no. It's she meant Sunday. Um, oh, okay. Okay. And that makes more sense. Um, yeah. But yeah. still. But yeah, it gets. Well. Yeah, and in my state, we voted that if California and Washington decide to do it, then we'll go on permanent daylight savings time, which is the wrong way around because standard time is the natural time and it's better for our bodies and our um, rhythms and everything else. But uh, anyway. And then you have the leap. The leap. The leap. Yeah. The, the leap years. Right. Mm -hmm. I had a friend that was born on one of them. That we went to school with, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm only three. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I hope you got birthdays more than once every four years. Right. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um. Oh, that's an interesting place. Yeah, I I want to. Yeah, when you're if you're ever in my show, Irene, I want to ask all about that. That. <laughs> yeah, um, I've I've heard a lot of that on legitimate hist history shows and travel shows. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, it's getting a little late. It's a little after. We've got a lot, just over an hour. Um, do you have anything else that you want to add or? Put out there. Uh, I'm yeah. sure we do. Keep your eyes to the yeah. skies. Yeah. Oh, just <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there uh, any there more questions, questions from you or the audience? the audience? Let's see. Um, the waterfall too. I never even heard about the waterfall. I'm not quite sure about the other. The forest, I think, is a place where people go and yeah, uh, have yeah, for I've centuries committed out. suicide. Um, I mean, I we do have places in America kind of like that, too. The what? So there's some places kind of like that here, too. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can't. I think I'm... Um, my brain is turned off. I can't think of anything right now. <laughs> and I'll get lots of questions as soon as we're done. But um, Josh, I thank you so very much. And oh, no problem. Again, uh, and get into uh, some of the other, maybe more esoteric things. Yeah, I got to have you on too, as well. Yeah, I'd love it. That'd be fun. Awesome. We'll schedule okay. some okay. after the show. Yeah, that's great. Now, have fun, everybody. I'm going to... They keep changing the buttons on me. I'm going to try to end the live stream. And we'll see you later. I'll... Um, I appreciate everybody watching at the different time. And... Um, oh. That's interesting. Whoa. Yeah. So yeah, good night, everybody. Good evening. Good morning, and goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> and have a wonderful rest of the weekend. You too. You too.